Hey guys, it's Poe back again with Let's Get Techie. Uh, today I received a very awaited package in the mail. Uh, FedEx dropped by while I was at work today and brought me this gorgeous MSI 1080 Ti Seahawk. Uh, I know that there's been a ton of 1080 Ti reviews. That's one of the reasons why I had not yet done a 1080 Ti review. Um, but I feel like we can skip benchmarking on this. Um, they're all performing about the same, which is exactly what I expected. But that doesn't mean that we can't take a closer look at this one and see if the liquid cooling is worthwhile. Uh, this comes in just under $800. I paid $790 shipped for it. Uh, that is up there with some of the most expensive, uh, but you have Asus and EVGA that have three fan solutions and they are right behind it at $780. Uh, so you would think that that would make it a good buy considering that it's liquid cooled. Um, that may not be the case. Uh, you have to keep in mind that Asus and EVGA, both of those cards that we're talking about, do have custom boards. This is running on a Founders Edition board. Uh, so let's go ahead and do an unboxing and dive in a little bit deeper. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at the box before we open it. Uh, the front is the usual Seahawk. Um, it's had a helicopter on it since, I think since the 980. Uh, could be wrong, but I think the, the 980 was the first time with that. Um, moving on to the side, there's nothing of great importance to see. Uh, around to the back it talks a little bit about uh, the liquid cooling. Uh, it shows off the fact that it does have an LED light, although I don't know if I agree with them calling it premium. Uh, it just lights up white. Um, I suppose you could change and make it flash or whatever, um, but to me that's not really a premium light. Um, then around to the other side of the box you've got the label. Um, one of the things that I noticed right off the bat that I wanted to show you guys before I opened it is how wide this box is. Um, this is probably the biggest box I've ever gotten uh, that had a graphics card inside. I did have the 1080 for the win hybrid uh, and the box that it came in was pretty large but it definitely was not as big as this one. Uh, so let's go ahead and get it unboxed. Alright, we've got it opened up and it looks like MSI is single-handedly trying to save all of the trees. Uh, this does look like uh, recycled paper, although I could be wrong, but good for them. Good for you, MSI. Good for you. Uh, MSI graphics card, quick guide, driver CD, uh, and an installation guide. Move that over to the side. Thank you for choosing an MSI product. Please register. All right, and the next thing that I'm greeted with is four screws. And if I had to take a guess, this is probably, uh, they're probably the screws to mount the radiator. And here she is in all of her glory. It is packaged in nice uh, foam. Uh, I highly doubt that it would be able to be damaged in transit. We're going to start by taking a look at the fan and radiator. So upon unboxing it, I realized that the fan blades are actually frosted, which made me wonder if it was actually an LED fan, which it is. If you look right here, this is actually where the LED is implemented. So these blades will light up. Uh, once we get the card in and get it going. Unfortunately, this fan is only a three pin, so no PWM with it. Um, so it's kind of a give and take. I don't know if you care that it has an LED or not, but it, it swapped out easy enough. Uh, this is a Corsair H55 liquid cooler that's strapped to this card. Uh, so it's your standard 120 mil radiator that you would find on the H55. Uh, and that's really all there is to it. It's a simple design. Uh, we do have the braided tubes, which is a nice touch. They don't bind, which is good. 
we'll get a better feel for it once we put it in the case and I'll let you know if I run into any problems with the uh, tubing being too stiff or not getting it to go where I need it to go to mount the radiator. Next we're going to move over to the card itself. Um, let me flip it so that you guys can get a better look at the back plate. Uh, so it is a metal back plate. Uh, it feels sturdy. doesn't feel like it adds anything to the uh, cooling. Um, I doubt it adds anything to the rigidity of the card either. Uh, but it is it's nice for the looks, I suppose. Um, I could have done without the dragon, um, but that's that's some people's cup of tea. Let me get it lifted up here. So we've got MSI down here at the bottom, the dragon logo. There is no LED light on the back plate. We have seen some uh, video cards lately that do have LEDs on the back plate. This is not going to be one of those. Uh, when we flip it around here to the front, we can see the, let me see if I can get it in focus, 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 nice. Um, on the front here we've got the logo uh, and then a huge uh, GeForce GTX. NVIDIA is requiring that third party manufacturers uh, do add the GeForce GTX to the side of the 1080. Um, this one is pretty big. I could have done without it. I really like what Asus did with their 1080 Ti Strix. Uh, they did put it there, but in the smallest fashion possible. So the Asus card actually just has a tiny sticker that says GeForce GTX. Obviously, 90% of people will pull those off if they don't like it. Um, the MSI logo that you can see here does in fact light up but it is not RGB on this card. So one more thing that I want to show you all before we put it in the computer is the I.O. Um, so for those astute viewers that may or may not have trust issues, you're probably saying to yourself right now, Poe, you lied to us. I knew when I saw your beard that I shouldn't have trusted you. You lied to us. It's not a Founders Edition. There's a DVI port. And you'd be right, there is a DVI port, but I didn't lie to you. It is still a Founders Edition board. MSI just decided to put the DVI port back on. So here we can see there is one DVI, one HDMI, and three DisplayPort. Uh, let's go ahead and pop it in the computer. All right, guys, here's the part of the video where I share my thoughts with you uh, and whether or not this card is worth the money. 
So, the first thing to keep in mind is this card does have an all-in-one liquid cooler. Uh, so what you saw when I was overclocking at the end of the video and running Valley Benchmark, uh, the core clock stayed stable the entire time. I believe it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 20, 38 megahertz. Uh, and the best part about it was that stability. You can hit that same overclock, I'm sure, on plenty other 1080 Ti's. The difference being is it's going to fluctuate because of the temperature of the card. With this on liquid, no fluctuation whatsoever. That's going to give you a smoother gaming experience. Um, in comparison to the other cards, you're going to get similar performance. Um, they're all going to perform just about the same. Uh, the difference is going to be this one will not fluctuate on that core clock. We were able to hit a pretty respectable overclock as well uh, for it being a 1080 Ti. So it comes down to is it worth $790? Uh, my opinion is it's probably not worth that clock stability to pay that premium when you can go out and get one that's almost $100 less. Um, so we're talking about something like EVGA's uh, Super Clock 2, um, I believe that's what it's called. Uh, basically, it's just a Founders Edition board with one of their aftermarket coolers. It's not the one that comes with the fancy thermal sensors, but at $720, it's going to get the job done. It's going to perform right on par with this card. You will have some clock fluctuation, but you probably won't see that in game very often. Um, so that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, make sure to stay tuned for more content. Get subscribed if you aren't already. And make sure to check us out on social media. We'll see you in the next one.